Hello and welcome to the second part in our series on VMware Cloud on AWS. In this session, we're going to talk about uh, compute and storage as well as logging and monitoring. So if you watched the previous video in this series, you'll recall that the SDDCs operate under a restricted permissions model. So in other words, you don't have full admin rights to the SDDC. Instead, you have a cloud admin role, which gives you enough access to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the SDDC. And so that in mind, when you log into vCenter for the first time, you'll note that there are a couple of resource pools that exist. So the first resource pool, the management resource pool is off limits. This is where the infrastructure components of the SDBC will reside. Now the compute resource pool, the cloud admin has full access to that. And so that is going to be the resource pool that you're going to use for deploying your VMs. Now, similarly on the storage side, um, there is a single vSAN cluster, and we are logically presenting that as two data stores. So the vSAN data store, again, off limits, that is for the infrastructure. Um, there's another data store called the workload data store that you're going to have permissions to. This is where you will deploy your VMs. And so two important points to keep in mind as you're building out the SDC. Now, On the subject of storage, in the current iteration of the hardware available, the storage is all local to the ESX hosts, and so therefore the total capacity you have uh, for the SDBC is a function of the number of hosts that you have in the SDBC. And so using an example of a three host SDBC, uh, that will give you about 30 terabytes of raw storage available to the SDBC. And if you're familiar with vSAN, uh, you'll know that uh, with vSAN you can create a number of storage policies that all have different uh, FTTs and FTMs. Um, so uh, there, there will, however, be a default storage policy um, that if you don't specify the storage policy when you create a VM, then it's going to use the default. And so with these uh, SDDCs, by default, we're going to use a uh, storage policy that uh, uses a RAID 1 FTM with an FTT of 1. And so that means for RAID 1, because you have to mirror everything, you effectively take your 30 terabytes uh, used in my example and cut it in half because we have to mirror all the data. So right out of the gate, you're cutting your, your available storage in half uh, with a RAID 1 uh, policy. Now we have dedupe and compression enabled, and so that helps uh, reduce the overall uh, storage footprint, but it's the vSAN storage policy that has the most impact. And so as you start adding hosts to the SDC, you will start getting um, some additional options for uh, creating different uh, policies. And so if you bump it up to a RAID 5, for example, you get reduced um, uh, storage overhead. And so you'll, you'll get effectively more storage. Now, when you're planning your SDDCs, one of the things you want to know is how many hosts do I need? If I'm planning on moving a, a bunch of workloads in, for example, I need to know how many hosts I'm, I'm going to need for this SDDC. And so we have this tool, the VM, uh, VMC Sizer, available to help you make those planning decisions. So EDRS is another feature that we'd like to point out. And so this is essentially, it's a automation system that helps reduce some of the manual management of the SDDC. And so effectively, it is a it is a feature that allows the SDDC to scale in and scale out automatically. And so if you enable this, you will go in and define minimums and maximums. So uh, maximums being, uh, for example, uh, I don't want the SDDC to grow beyond eight hosts, and I don't want it to ever shrink more uh, below four hosts. Uh, you can also... Uh, choose one of two uh, optimization models. So we've got uh, optimized for cost or performance. And basically that determines how aggressively we scale in or scale out. So if you choose uh, optimize for cost, then we conservatively scale out. So basically we will set the thresholds higher and we will aggressively scale in. And if you choose for performance, then we do the exact opposite. So using an example or walking through an example of how this works, um, once you enable it, we monitor the CPU memory and storage of the SDC. And once you cross a certain threshold, we will trigger a scale out operation and we will automatically add a host to the SDC. Now on the flip side of that, if your uh, usage drops below a certain threshold, we will then trigger a scale in operation and remove hosts. And so this is a scaling and auto scaling uh, tool that you have for the SDC. Now that said, um, even if you have EDRS, disabled, we will actively monitor the storage of the SDDC 
And uh, this is really for vSAN um, health reasons. And so if you're familiar with vSAN, you'll know that it needs a certain amount of slack space uh, in order to stay happy. And so we will monitor the STDC. And if you cross 70% utilization on your storage, then we will alert you and say, hey, you might uh, consider adding uh, another host. If you ignore that uh, notification, and you cross 75% threshold, then we will automatically add a host to the SDC. And this is really just to, to, to keep uh, vSAN uh, healthy within your SDC. It's sort of a preventative measure on our part. So logging and monitoring. So it's uh, very common for customers to want to know how they get syslog messages out of the SDDC. And so for that, we have the log intelligence service. And so log intelligence is a service that you will activate at the org level. Once you do so, um, it will be available for all of your SDDCs. And so as soon as you activate, you're going to get a 30 day uh, free trial to the paid tier of the service. And so the paid tier gives you the full a feature set of the service, including the ability to forward uh, logs off to third-party syslog server, uh, services. And so at the end of the 30-day trial, if you opt to not uh, continue, then you will drop down to the free tier. And the free tier gives you essentially um, unlimited audit logs, which are basically just logs from the STDC itself. Uh, you have some restricted ability to send in um, non-audit logs, so application logs, for example, and then your log retention drops down. Uh, you still have access to the console and search and save query functions. Um, more information about that tool, I would say this URL here. So that concludes this portion of the presentation. In future sessions, um, I will be discussing network architecture as well as doing a VMC console tour. So keep your eye out for the next vi uh, videos in the series. Thanks for watching.